flew in. I just came in from Colorado Springs. I landed at 520. I was so committed to this that I left my luggage and I stopped at Marshalls and bought this. $28. Now this left leg longer than the other one, so every now and then if you see this, that's just me trying to balance it. Woo! Then I ran to the house to change and the phone rang and my auntie called and tied me up. You know, your Japanese challenge aunt, they call your house, tie you up, so you can't leave. Because she ain't got nothing to do. The phone rang, I'm like, hello? She said, hey, how you doing, baby? I'm about to sign. She said, where your mom at? She just left. Uh, she gone? <laughs> yes, ma'am, that's what that means, she ain't here. Where she at? Her and my daddy just pulled off. Stay together. <laughs> yes, ma'am, that's what that means, in the same car. What was you doing? I just woke up. You were asleep? <laughs> nope, the other just woke up. <laughs> I tell you, I love it. I love how nice everybody looks. This is what black folks do. We look nice regardless of our circumstances. When you feel it down, you dress up. Now there's nobody in here who's like that to the statement. Some of y'all are texting your kids now. Don't turn their heat, uh, heat up past 73. <laughs> but that's what life is about. When you come from something, you know, harsh, it can be a beautiful thing, can't it? You can develop into something beautiful. When you come from the dirt, you can really, really grow into something beautiful. If you don't believe me, go ask for flower. <laughs> Yes. You know you've been poor. Anybody, anybody been poor makes you know it. Okay. Maybe I left some folks off. Anybody still poor? Okay, all right. Yes, yeah, I see the seven dollars seats. Got it. I'll give you a test. You don't know you've been poor unless I give you a test. If I name one thing and you can name the other one, you know you've been poor. Let's try it. Peanut butter? Yeah. Ain't no jelly. Peanut butter and jelly. They sell it at the bread company. Seven dollars. <laughs> Washer. Clothesline. A dry river. Well, y'all, y'all, who is, okay, this must be the DZ program. <laughs> Kids, they don't know for this weather to be like this in December. Back in the day, you used to sleep with the oven door open. You talking about, I want to feel toasty in here. Yes, because the bread in there too. Same time. You cut your gas off in the winter back in the day. When it used to be 22 below. Freezing. See, these kids fall today. They talk different about the weather now. Because back in, like today, you would hear a kid, you had downstairs, Mama, she'd be like, what? Uh-uh, he got his foot on me. <laughs> back in the day, that gas off would be different. Mama, what? He won't scoot up. <laughs> scoot up, look at that baby clothes. <laughs> I was mad that they cut the gas off. I just was upset about how they went about doing it. Because some people ain't got no God in them. They come and cut your gas off. They don't know what's going on in your house. They don't give you no warning. They don't know if somebody cooking or in the shower. They could knock on the door. Excuse me, Miss Bradford. We know you're cooking the roast at 350 degrees for an hour. But we advise you to cook it at 700 for 30 minutes. You ain't got half the gas you thought you could have. They pull up in front of your mama's house with a LeCleve van, a big van, just to cut the gas off. They pull up and they 
put cones around the van. They don't need that. They just let the people up the street know, try it if you want to. This could be you. They on the side of the house reading the meter. You know what to say. They ain't got it. Cut your gas off. Black people come and cut your gas off, but it's like God is always in us. This black dude come cut our gas off. But he was spiritual, we could tell, because he was looking at us, we was looking at him. <laughs> he was looking at us, we was looking at him. So, as we looking at him, we cut the gas off. He just looking at us, and then he just said, man, sometimes I wish I ain't even work for you. <laughs> and then he'll drop a tool and say, hey, twist that white thing, get it, come back home. God. You know we see God in everything. Black people make a way out of everything. Our gas got cut off but our electric was on because it was free. And black mothers, I applaud you because you made up the way out of nowhere. Our gas was off but our electric was on. It was cold. School night. My mother, she plugged her iron up next to the bed. And she ironed the bed. Now look here, when I move, I advise you to jump in here and go to bed. You can back up like a double dutch contest. I mean, hard living. Beautiful. I love it though. That's why I'm particular about gas now. The gas prices, I don't appreciate them. Because they high for nothing. Gas is too hot. Remember back in the day you was proud of your gas purchase at the gas station? Remember you would pull up in the 70s, 80s at the gas station and leave your car running? <laughs> Ready along. You go in. May I help you? Yes. Let me see. I tell you what. Give me, you know what? I'm gonna go for it. Give me five on pump seven. You like the whole five? Yes, the entire five. Big bowl up. Bring up your gas prices, it's so embarrassing. You walk up, she looking at you like, hey, you know what, for real? I don't really need them for real. I tell you what, just give me, you know what? Uh, you hear somebody coming in, you're like, oh, you know, go ahead, all y'all go ahead. <laughs> you know what, just give me, just give me a pack of spirit, man.